Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In the last episode, I mentioned how I was going to redo the graphics on my vintage sci-fi themed guitar, and I have just completed doing that. So what I thought I would do in this episode is kind of walk you through, step by step, how I applied this graphic to the front of this guitar. It's slightly different than the technique I was using earlier where I had put down Mod Podge and then put the uh, a reverse mirror of the image down and then let it dry and then rubbed it off and all that. This is a, a, a slightly simpler uh, way of doing it and it results in a brighter, more saturated color. And this is a technique that you can do with either an inkjet printer or a laser printer. Either one will work. So let's get started. The first step in this technique is to print off the design on my desktop inkjet printer. I divided up the design into four quadrants and allowed for overlap on each printout. I use a large picture window to help line up each page that I printed out and it helps to have that overlap so that you can get everything lined up. And then each page was taped together to form one homogeneous design. I cut the design in half horizontally and then vertically and removed and disposed of the overlapping scrap. I also trimmed away the excess just outside the outer perimeter of the guitar body shape. This will make it easier to laminate the sections down onto the body later on. And this is what the four quadrants look like just before I'm ready to laminate them to the body. To laminate the sheets to the body, I'll be using z finishing resin, a small cup to mix up the resin, and a popsicle stick to do the mixing. I'm also wearing nitrile gloves to keep my fingers clean. You don't want to use latex because latex doesn't play well with epoxy. Z epoxy is pretty forgiving, but you want to try to mix up equal parts of the resin and the hardener. And now I'll use the popsicle stick to thoroughly mix the two parts together. It's important that they be completely mixed thoroughly. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of z epoxy. And what I'll do is I'll pour it out onto the surface. Now you have a long working time with z epoxy, so you don't have to worry about it starting to set up right away. And I've found the easiest and quickest way to spread it around the surface is just to use my fingers. That's why you need to wear nitrile gloves. You can't use latex gloves. They just won't work for this. But you want to make sure you get that uh, epoxy spread in evenly over the entire surface, leaving no gaps and no dry spots. Now it's time to apply the graphics. Because you have such a long working time with z -epoxy, it's easy to lay the graphic down and then you still have a little bit of time, usually about 10 to 15 minutes, where you can move the graphic to get everything to line up properly. Each sheet is carefully laid down and then butted up to the sheet next to it. And as I said before, you have that long working time, so I can move the sheets around to get everything to line up. And I'm also making sure that I have a little bit of overhang around the entire perimeter of the body. To laminate these, all you need to do is lay each printed quadrant onto uh, the epoxy and the epoxy will soak into the paper and adhere it to the surface of the guitar body. It'll take about an hour for the z epoxy to really tack up and then an additional several hours for it to cure. After the z epoxy has cured for several hours, I'll go back and trim off the excess using a fresh 
very sharp X-Acto blade. And I'll trim away that excess as cleanly as I possibly can. That's why you need to use a, uh, a brand new sharp blade. And don't be too concerned if you have a, a few rough spots. Uh, you can sand those and, and touch them up a little bit more later on. Now, if you're wondering why I laminated directly over the uh, neck pocket and the pickout pockets, that's because it's easier just to trim away the excess after it's been laminated down. To seal in the graphic, I mixed up another small batch of the Z-Poxy, poured it out onto the surface, and then spread it around with my fingers. If you look closely at the edge of the guitar, you'll see some runs and drips forming. That's no big deal because since Z-Poxy has such a long working time, I can easily smooth those out. I'll let the seal coat of uh, z -poxy resin cure for a couple of hours, and then at that point I'll be ready to start my uh, application of my final clear coats. Okay, well there you have it in a nutshell, a simple way to laminate graphics onto the front of a guitar body. At this point, um, I have some options open. I can um, build up more coats of the z -poxy and use that as my finish, or I could start spraying um, any one of a number of different types of clear coats. You know, really, it, it, what it comes down to is what you feel most comfortable using. Uh, if you want to use nitrocellulose lacquer, you could do that. Uh, you could use 2K, you could use um, uh, water-based products, you know, uh, polyester, whatever it is that you like to use to do your final clear coats. And that's what I'll do next. I'll just start spraying some clear coats down. Um, I'll probably use um, Crystal Lax Bright Tone uh, Instrument Finish. I've been really uh, pleased with how that product performs. So I'll build up some coats and then I will level sand and polish and then take it to the buffer and buff it up to a high gloss shine. And that should be it for the body. So uh, that's it for this week. And in the next episode, I'm hoping to talk more about the whole process of uh, dressing, leveling, and crowning frets. And I've been um, meaning to do that for a while, and I mentioned that in the last couple of videos, and I just wanted to kind of touch on that in the next episode. So until then, take care, and we'll see you soon.